Hello, this is a brief tutorial on how to use Crazy Bump to generate a normal map for an object. In this um, scene, I have a normal map applied to this uh, work in progress model here. The design was done by Horia Dochu. This is a uh, low poly model. with a diffuse map and specular map and normal map applied and here is the same model without the normal map okay just turning that off and on I'm using a real-time direct X shader and we'd like to show you a couple of options for generating the normal map with Crazy Bump. Uh, making normal maps with Crazy Bump is a good idea to embellish other normal maps or to get something done uh, quickly. There are several ways to generate uh, very uh, complex and interesting normal maps using XSI or ZBrush or XNormal. Lots of various ways to do it. Uh, 3D Studio Max also can generate normal maps. But with this uh, particular example, we're going to take a um, version of the color map that has been edited slightly in Photoshop to take out things like the ambient occlusion map that was applied and multiplied, um, to take out some uh, other detail that was painted in so it does not become part of the normal map. I want to get the horizontal lines and the vertical lines in and a little bit of the dirt and grime and this was actually um, set back from uh, a higher setting now it's just multiplied slightly and I've adjusted other uh, layers taken off some effects and so forth and have come up with something I want to now take into Crazy Bump and convert to a normal map so once this PSD has been edited, I save it to a target file, and then I open that in Crazy Bump. And so in Crazy Bump, I will go to Open and open the edited PSD file. Usually I'll save the master file as one name and then do a save as in Photoshop specifically for uh, the normal map. Um, you can add a layer for normal map in your PSD file. Same thing with specular. Uh, just stay real organized. Now these are the default settings in Crazy Bump and it can produce uh, a relatively muddy effect. So let's see how that works. Okay, I'm going to save normals to file and I will do dome building normal default for the default settings. Now in 3D Studio I will swap out this normal map for the default settings to show you the difference. And the what happens is that the normal map is a, is a bit too intense uh, maybe some aspects of it are useful but uh, this is a little bit muddy and so in Crazy Bump you have options for intensity and sharpening and so forth and you can once you set those to the desired levels you can uh, save your settings so here is one variation that I use and you can see that the normal map has changed which can now be exported. Continue to work on it some more and develop the second set. Very subtle differences. And then I tone down the intensity, which I prefer in this case, and made a third preset. And you can see the intensity is, is a bit less. Here's the difference. So uh, we can actually do uh, another version that's slightly more intensity than we had. And once you edit these settings 
um, and this is really going to take some trial and error on um, the part of the artist to get the look that they're going for. Um, just play with it and do the preview in Crazy Bump, which allows you to see kind of what your normal map will look like in the scene. Right. And so um, some settings you'll want to keep low and high. It just depends on your particular um, design and your texture. So with these settings, I have a, a preset that's been slightly edited. I'm going to go ahead and save the normals to a file and save it as uh, version 3B since it's a slightly different than version 3. Save it as a target file. All right. And so now I'm going to just drag from my Explorer window into 3D Studio Max. Here is the scene without a normal map. And here's the scene with a normal map. Now in this case I want to keep the green channel as is because I'm not going back and forth between programs like ZBrush and 3D Studio Max where you often have to carefully watch um, flipping the green channel within the normal map. And so just remember this has a specular map applied to it which makes things look uh, even more interesting usually and a gloss map applied as well. But this uh, concludes the uh, brief tutorial on using Crazy Bump to load a version of your normal map, sorry, a version of your color map, and then set the settings in Crazy Bump and saving out the file as a normal map and applying it in your material shader.